So in this video, what I'm going to do is one of the types of questions that you'll see often in your um, textbook and also maybe on a unit test, where a teacher asks you to find the graph of a function that has certain conditions. So I'm going to put the link to this on uh, the bottom of the note here, and you can go and download it, or you can freeze frame, write down the characteristics, and see if you can graph it on your own. So the first thing you should look for are the points. And sometimes they hide those right at the bottom of the description. But in this one, it gives you points. So you can see if I say f at minus 1 equals 4, you know that's the coordinate, minus 1, 4. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that right above here, minus 1 and 4. And this one says f at 7 is minus 5. So that gives me another point, 7 and minus 5. And you can put those right on your graph right away. I don't know if you can see the graph. Minus 1 and 4. It's very, very sunny this morning. This might be too bright. But that's good. Bright is good. right? Except I can't see anything. Okay, and it also says that f prime at minus 1 is equal to 0. So what does that mean? Like put these things into words and, and that will make your life much easier. So if I say f prime at 1 equals 0, I'm saying that the slope at x equals negative 1 is 0. So it's horizontal slope there. That also means that you have a minimum or a maximum. So I don't know yet. I know it's one or the other. It has zero, it has horizontal slope there, but I don't know if it's a maximum or a minimum value. So I'll have to check farther down. The same thing for this one. They say f at seven is minus five, and f prime at seven is zero. So this is saying the same thing. The slope at x equals seven is zero, so it's horizontal slope, minimum or maximum value. So same same thing. Okay, it says there are vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals minus 3. Well, we know what a vertical asymptote is, so let's put those right on the graph right away. So it said vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Oh, I almost put it 3 there. That would have been... Well, there's lots of shadows on this when I, when I move in to draw. So there's 1 and x is minus 3. I'm going to put in my other asymptote here. Okay, so asymptotes, done. Check. The limit as x approaches infinity of the function is minus 4. So that's a limit from the to the right as positive infinity, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity is also negative 4. So that should mean something to you as well. That's telling you that there is a horizontal asymptote is y equals minus 4. Okay, so we can put that on the graph as well. So there's my minus 4. I'm going to label that one, and I should have labeled the other ones as well. So this was x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 3. Okay, so we're, we're doing really swell here. Okay, now let's go to E. It says the second derivative is greater than 0 between minus 3 and 9. So between minus 3 and 9, the function is going to be concave up, right? This, this statement means the second derivative is greater than 0 means concave up. So I'm going to write that on here, concave up. And it says the function is concave down. That means the second derivative of less than 0. This means concave down, so in this area. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in my memory bank, that these are going to be concave down, this is going to be concave up in that zone f prime at x is greater than 0, that means there is positive slope, and they give you the 
ranges for the positive slope and negative slope. So this is just, I'm just going to write this here, positive and negative slopes. F double prime at 9 is equal to 0, and F at 9 equals minus 4.5. So if f double prime at 9 equals 0, that means that at 9 there is a point of inflection. Right? That's what this is telling you here. Point of inflection when x is equal to 9. Oh, and then they give you the coordinates of that point. So this is 9 and minus 4.5 is a point of inflection. Okay, so now we've read all of the parts. We've drawn some of the things on here. And we need to find, let's find that point of inflection. It's set at 9 and minus 4.5. So 9 and minus 4.5. That's going to be about here. This is 9 minus 4.5. And that's a point of inflection. So if the graph is going to approach this horizontal asymptote, that means it's going to be going like this, and there should be a little change in direction there. And we know that this point here, 7, at 7 it was a minimum or a maximum. So if this is approach, approaching the horizontal asymptote here, and we have to approach this vertical asymptote, we don't have, this is a, a minimum value, so I can't go any lower. So that means this is going to be one of those functions that can cross a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to go up like this on this side. So we've got part of the graph done now. Now, x equals 1 is a vertical asymptote, and we don't know the equation, so I don't know whether it is a double or a single asymptote. So, or I mean odd or even. So I don't know if this is going up or going down. So what do I know about this point here, minus 1? So it says between minus 1 and 1, the slope is positive. Between minus 1 and 1. So if the slope is positive, that means this has to be going up. Um, what else did we have for slopes here? How about to the other side of, of minus 1? So we had minus 1 to 1 and x greater than 7. So again, okay, that's that works with what we've drawn here, positive slope. The slope is negative, negative slope here when x is less than minus 1. So that means this has to have negative slope. And this is a minimum value. Now it's also saying that it has negative slope between um, for all of x less than minus 1. So it means that the function has to be over here as well. So it we're on the other side of this asymptote here. So this has to be going down like this because we need negative slope. And it's going to approach infinity there. So this also helps in here. It says that the slope is negative for x less than negative 1. So that's here. Between 1 and 7. That's right here. And the slope was greater than 0 for x greater than 7. There's positive between minus 1 and 1. It is concave up between minus 3 and positive 9. So minus 3, that's in here, so we have concave up here, and we had concave up to here. And it said it's concave down for x less than negative 3, and that clarifies this side here. If it's concave down, we have concave down here. Okay, so that's kind of um, one of the trickier little questions that you might be asked to graph, given some certain characteristics of a function. And... I'm sure you'll have seen those in your homework assignments as well.
Hope that helps and don't forget you can go and download this from the PB Wiki site and I'll send you the link. Bye.